Hi, my name is Gordon Hanks, CEO of Bridgepoint Systems. Welcome to our spot and stain removal video. This presentation, while not designed to show you how to remove every stain in the world, will set you on a straight and successful path, giving you amazing results using simple stain removal methods. My 38 years in this field has taught me that stain removal expertise sets the professional apart from his competition, excites and amazes his customers, creates more value for his customers who are then willing to pay more, and creates more referrals when his customer tells her friend the most amazing thing he did, he took out that big permanent marker stain that Johnny put in the carpet years ago. Tom Forsyth, our Bridgepoint Master Chemist, and I have had a lot of fun working on new products. Okay, so do I get to join? Okay, now you go. You don't do them online. Okay. Hey, we weren't supposed to show that. We were on an official break. Anyway, we have been busy in the lab creating great products and procedures for using them. Our goal, improve your success removing spots and stains and make it faster and easier. And do this with fewer and safer chemicals. Your success is assured when using the Bridgepoint Stain Removal Kit. It contains seven synergistic stain removal agents. They'll lift 99.9% .9 of the stains without additional products. Let's take a moment and have Richard introduce these great products to you. Avenge Pro. This water-based stain remover has the widest coverage of stain removal capabilities of any product ever produced. Ink to eggs or permanent marker to blood, containing 12 unique ingredients, all considered green by the way, it goes way beyond the typical protein spotter and into stain territory that only the heavy-duty, smelly, paint, oil, and grease removers of old once treated. All Solve Extreme. This gelled, solvent-based product will remove tough fingernail polish, paints, and other difficult to remove grease, oils, and resins. No other solvent will do more while still being safe for fibers. When using this amazing twosome, Avenge Pro and All Solve Extreme, no other spotter is needed to break down, emulsify, and dissolve ink, lipstick, shoe polish, fingernail polish, paint, permanent marker, and more. Stain Zone Takes care of organic stains and dyes. Urine stains, wine stains, coffee, tea, and many others. Stain Zone is based on highly technical, stabilized, oxidizing, and accelerating components. Red Zone Ready is designed for the removal of synthetic stains and dyes. The dyes contained in Kool-Aid, popsicles, candies, and some other foods can be effectively removed from most fibers with Red Zone Ready. Tea Rust. Tea Rust is designed to remove, you guessed it, rust. Much safer to use than some of the harsh acids previously prescribed Tea rust will make rust disappear in minutes. Gel break, an adhesive gum remover. Chewing gum and carpet do not go well together. Gel break will penetrate the gum and loosen it from the fibers for easy removal. Gel break is also great on adhesives like the residue from duct and other tapes. Spot stop. This innovative product is the final step in almost all spotting. A fine mist of spot stop over the previously stained area as a last step will actually drive small particles of spotting material to the backing where they are invisible to the naked eye. It will prevent soil or stain residues from wicking back up as the area dries. A couple of other simple tools come with the professional spotting kit. The Whiz Groom. This simple little tool is used in almost all stain removal procedures. With a scraping edge, an agitation edge, and the small brush edge, the Whiz Groom can do just about everything you need for working on spots and stains. The Gum Getter. 
Like the name implies, this tool is used to remove chewing gum. It is also effective when extra agitation is needed while minimizing damage to the carpet. Absorbent Cotton Towels White towels will always be needed for a multiple of stain removal procedures. Disposable Nitrile Gloves You don't want your fingers mixing with some of those unpleasant stains you run into. The Spotting Guide this simple version will guide you through the proper technique and solutions for removing stains in the five main spotting categories. Most spots and stains fall into five categories. These are synthetic color and dye stains. An example would be children's red drinks. These stains are primarily treated with Red Zone Ready. Organic stains. An example of this would be urine. These stains are primarily treated with Stain Zone. Oil, resin, and pigmented based stains. Examples of these are inks and paints and are primarily treated with Avenge Pro and All Solve Extreme. Gum and adhesives would also fall into this category and would primarily be treated with gel break. Protein and food stains. Examples would be blood and egg. These would be primarily treated with Avenge Pro. Specialty stains. Examples include rust, yellowing, and water stains. These are primarily treated with tea rust and stain zone. Stains in your customers' homes or businesses are usually caused by accidents or fun-loving kids. Your success in removing these stains is enhanced if you can identify the stain. Asking the customer is usually your best option. If the customer is not available or does not know where the stain originated, then use the detective in you to make your best educated guess. In our stain removal application for smartphones and tablets, available at interlinksupply.com slash app, as well as the stain removal guide on bridgepoint.com and interlinksupply.com, we have over 100 stains and the procedures for removing them listed. These guides give more specific detail, as well as fallback procedures if the first is not completely successful. These guides are free, simple to use, and follow. We highly recommend you access them and take advantage of this great resource. For today, we are going to look at the five categories of stains, demonstrate removing a stain from each category, and then, depending on the time available, the facilitator has set up a demo table where you can practice these techniques. If you are watching this training video independently, we highly recommend you obtain some carpet, stain it, and practice the techniques outlined. Category 1 Stains with Synthetic Color and Dye Stains Examples would be children's red drinks, strawberry flavored amoxicillin. These stains are primarily treated with Red Zone Ready. Let's remove Kool-Aid. Step 1 Apply Red Zone Ready to the contaminated area. Apply enough to thoroughly wet the stained area, but not enough to soak into the backing. Step 2. Apply a wet cotton towel, usually double thickness, over the stain. Apply a heated iron at the lowest steam setting. Do a quick check for color removal every 20 to 30 seconds. Step 3. When the color is gone, a yellow cast is usually left. Rinse thoroughly. Step 4. Mist Spot Stop 
and work in with the WIS group. Category 2 Organic Stains Examples are urine, decaffeinated coffee, mold, and wood. These type of stains are primarily treated with Stain Zone. We will demonstrate with yellow highlighter ink. This could represent urine and decaffeinated coffee. Apply the Stain Zone to the contaminated area. Lightly agitate and allow it to dwell until stain is gone. If the stain is gone, then extract rinse. Otherwise, stain zone will self-neutralize with no resoiling issues and continue to work as it dries. Category 3 Oil, Resin, and Pigmented Based Examples are inks and paints, primarily treated with Avenge Pro and All Solve Extreme. Gum and adhesives would fall into this category and would primarily be treated with gel break. Markers and inks come in many different forms. Some may be fresh while others years old. Some will dissolve easily while others take more effort. Our goal is to remove the contaminant without spreading it into other fibers and into the backing. We will first demonstrate on permanent marker, then fingernail polish, followed by gum. Step 1. Apply Avenge Pro directly to the stain and allow it to dwell for 30 seconds. If the fiber is particularly delicate, as you would find on some upholstery, you may apply Avenge Pro to a towel first and then blot the stain. Step 2. Apply a clean towel with pressure to absorb and remove the colored pigment. Repeat this until the largest part of the colored pigment has been removed. Step 3. Apply Avenge Pro. Step 4. Agitate with Whiz Groom into a foam. Remove suspended contaminant. The color should be suspended in the foam. And repeat as long as stain is moving into the foam. Step 5. Apply All Solve Extreme and agitate, and then Avenge Pro and agitate. Rinse, then repeat if necessary.
Finally, mist on spot stop and work in with the whiz group. The alternative quick method is as follows. Step 1. Apply a bench pro directly to the stain. Agitate and allow it to dwell for 30 seconds. Step 2. Dry extract with back tool and then repeat. Step 3. Apply all solve extreme. Agitate. Avenge Pro. Agitate. Step 4. Rinse and mist with spot stop. Now for fingernail polish. Apply Avenge Pro around the contaminated area to guard against aggressive wicking of all solve extreme and dissolved pigment from moving into the backing and surrounding fibers. Tests reveal that virtually all oil, resin, and pigmented stains can be removed by putting the Avenge Pro on first and then the all solve extreme. Avenge Pro will not set stains. Step 2. Apply All Solve Extreme. Lightly agitate and absorb colored pigment into a white towel. Repeat until most of the pigment is gone. Step 3. Apply Avenge Pro and agitate lightly. Step 4. Rinse and mist spot stop, working it in with the whiz group. Now for gum and adhesive removal. Step 1. Poke holes in gum surface with gum getter. Step 2. Apply gel break to surface of gum and let dwell for 5 to 10 minutes. Step 3. Agitate and remove gum with the gum getter. Pick up the spent gum with a towel and repeat as necessary. Apply a small amount of gel break and agitate with towel to remove any remaining residue and then rinse with water. Step 4. Mist Spot Stop and work it in with the whiz group. Category 4. Protein in most foods. For example, blood and egg. 
you would primarily treat these with Avenge Pro. We will demonstrate with some dried on blood, cow's blood if you please, and some regular Coca-Cola with a substantial quantity spilled on the carpet. First, the blood. Step 1. Remove excess contaminant that may be present. Step 2. Apply Avenge Pro and agitate. If stain is hard, allow Avenge Pro to dwell and soften the contaminant. Step 3. Rinse and repeat if necessary. Please note, some food stains contain synthetic or organic dyes which may not be completely removed with the above procedure. If some stain remains, depending on the origin, synthetic or organic, follow the steps using stain zone or red zone ready. Vacuum to get the stained area as dry as possible before beginning. Now for the coke spill. When faced with a heavy spill that is either water and sugar based like coke, sprite and fruit juices or oil based like bacon grease or cooking oil, wicking of the stain back to the surface after spotting is to be expected. There are two different techniques to prevent wick backs. One, Remove all the contaminant out of the carpet and backing using a spot claw or flash spotter. 2. Treating the area with an encapsulate wicking preventative like Spot Stop. The most effective treatment for these types of stains would be a combination of both. So on the heavy coke spill we, step 1, treat with Avenge Pro by applying enough to penetrate partially into the backing. Step 2 agitate. Step 3. Extract and flush using the flash spotter. Extra water should be flushed through the carpet. Step 4. Vacuum to achieve maximum water removal. Step 5. Mist spot stop and work it in with the whiz groom. To demonstrate the effectiveness of spot stop on preventing wicking of a deep spill, we spilled two full cans of coke on the carpet piece in two areas. Both areas were cleaned exactly alike, but one of the stains was misted with spot stop after extracting. The carpet was then put into a heavy traffic area as a walk-off mat coming from the parking lot for just a few days. Notice that the stain not treated with spot stop wicked back, sugar, and soiled very quickly. On the other area, while lightly soiled, exhibited no wick back. Category 5 is specialty stains. Examples include rust, yellowing, and water stains. These are primarily treated with tea rust and stain zone. We will demonstrate with rust. Step 1. Apply tea rust. Step 2. Lightly agitate and allow to dwell until the stain disappears. Step 3 rinse thoroughly. Note that some yellowing and water stains may respond well to treatment with stain zone. There is one more category of stains that we have not mentioned. The unknown stain. 
If these stains are not removed with your normal cleaning, then follow this simple process. Apply Avenge Pro. Agitate. If stain is releasing, continue and then rinse. If some stain remains, apply All Solve Extreme. Agitate. If the stain is releasing, continue. Apply Avenge Pro and rinse. If some stain remains, apply Stain Zone or Red Zone Ready. Since the origin of the stain is unknown, testing will determine which to use. A word about upholstery. Upholstery fibers and fabrics present stain removal challenges that are quite different than carpet. Upholstery fabrics are made from both natural and synthetic fibers. They are often blended and it may be difficult or impossible to ascertain the exact fabric makeup. Upholstery fabrics are much thinner than carpet. There is less fiber with which to work. The pile won't hide a spot. Mistakes will be readily apparent. Upholstery fabrics are generally more delicate and subject to damage. Upholstery fabrics have the backing and pad material much closer to the surface. Upholstery fabrics are more prone to bleeding or color loss. Upholstery fabrics are more prone to texture change. Upholstery fabrics are more prone to shrink. Some upholstery fabrics are not compatible with water-based products. Generally, the more expensive the upholstery, the more prone the piece is to one of the previously mentioned problems. So, what's the good news? With a little training and practice, you can become proficient and handle the most delicate of fibers. This leads to opportunities for higher income as you can take care of designer type fabrics for high-end clients who will gladly pay higher prices. Let's go over a few guidelines for upholstery spotting. Keep in mind this is not an exhaustive study for upholstery stain removal but general guidelines. Testing is paramount. Always test on an inconspicuous part of the upholstery such as around the zipper on a cushion to make sure the products you are using are compatible with fiber. Less is more with upholstery. Start with just a small amount of the spotting agent. You may want to apply it to a towel first and then gently blot on the stain. Even consider applying solution to small stains with a Q-tip. This will keep the solution on the stain only. Know what the backing and filling material are made from. Most upholstery will have zippered cushions. Unzip and look to see if the fabric is stabilized with latex or similar backing. This could change the solution you use. Check the filling or foam cushion. If it has polyester batting, this gives you some wiggle room in what you can use on the face fiber. If the fabric sits directly on the foam pad, you should restrict the use of solvents or place a barrier between the filling and fabric before the spotting begins. Take extra care with agitation. Some woven fabrics or others with a raised pile can lose their stability and structure if over agitated. Test for shrinkage. Some fabrics with multiple fiber types can exhibit uneven shrinkage one fiber will shrink while another will not. This is quite unusual but worth checking for. When doing the testing, look for puckering or texture change. This may indicate uneven shrinkage. Dry clean only. While often cleaning instructions on upholstery tags are wrong or misguided, you will run into fabrics where, because of potential bleeding, shrinkage, or manufacturing techniques, water-based products should not be used. In this case, it is good to have Solvent Clean, a 100% volatile solvent spotter, in your spotting kit. This is a companion product to All Solve Extreme. Some fibers are not compatible with oxidizers and reducers. 
If the stain type calls for the use of stain zone, an oxidizer, or red zone ready, a reducer, then testing in an inconspicuous area is essential. Also consider diluting these products with half part water to decrease the chances of causing color loss or weakening the fabric. A word about natural fibers. Installed wool carpet and wool area rugs make up less than 1% of all the carpet in the USA. But it is a very important 1%. Wool is the gold standard of carpet. When you are cleaning wool, you may be working for large hotels, casinos, or other properties in the hospitality industry or influential residential clients with quality carpets or oriental rugs. You may also encounter some cotton fibers. The surface of the wool fiber helps to hide soil. This means the volume of soil present may be considerably more than is apparent from just looking. Wool is a very absorbent fiber. It can hold up to 30 percent of its weight in liquid. Cotton is also very absorbent. So coffee, soft drinks, or any other liquid can really saturate wool, penetrating deeply into the fiber. Wool is a staple yarn. Depending upon the quality of the wool, individual filaments may be from 4 inches to 7 inches long. Excessive agitation can cause short fibers to be pulled from the yarn and result in a fuzzy appearance. Wool is sensitive to some cleaning chemicals. Excess alkalinity can make wool brittle and yellow. It also contributes to felting and color bleeding. Oxidizers can also yellow wool, weaken or even dissolve the fibers. Strong reducers can also weaken the fiber. Both oxidizers and reducers may damage some dyes used for oriental rugs. Oxidizers and reducers also weaken cotton. Just as with upholstery fabric, you can master spot and stain removal on wool with a little training, experience, and most importantly, patients. Let's look at some guidelines. Inspection for pre-existing conditions is important, especially for rugs. For example, mold growing on a rug may have done more than produce a stain. Since mold loves to feed on cellulosic material, it may have eaten away and weakened cotton foundation yarns. Test for color fastness. Dampen a clean white cotton towel with the cleaning agent you want to test. Place this on the rug and hold it in place with a weight. If the face yarns also appear on the backing, do the testing on the back. After several minutes, check the towel for any color transfer. For rugs with multiple colors of dye, be sure to test each color. Check for shrinkage issues. Any sign of ripples or curling along the edges of a rug indicate shrinking is possible. Installed wool needs to be firmly adhered to the tackless strip. Be careful of excessive agitation. Fiber damage can occur. Alkalinity. Wool is sensitive to alkalinity. Products with pH above 8.5 should be rinsed and neutralized. Be cautious with highly buffered alkalins that maintain their pH. Oxidizers can weaken wool as well as cotton fringes on rugs. They may also produce a yellow tint that is easily seen on white or cream colored wool. Use oxidizers such as stain zone only as a last resort for restoration and only with the client's informed consent. Consider diluting an oxidizer to half the suggested strength. Testing in an inconspicuous area is essential. Reducers are safer on wool than oxidizers, but they can still cause problems and potentially weaken natural fibers. Use red zone or other reducers cautiously. Consider diluting them to one half the usual strength. Always test an inconspicuous area first. I appreciate you taking the time with us today. 
with just a little practice, you can become a true spot and stain expert. If you'd like more information and to learn how to remove specific stains, then I suggest you go to bridgepoint.com or interlinksupply.com. And if you'd like to load a free application, then please go to interlinksupply.com slash app. It's been a real pleasure. Have a great day. Bye.